What I'd like to show now are rotated playlists and how they work. So a rotated playlist is when we want to pick from different uh, numbered iTunes playlists where we already have determined what content we want. Over here what I've done in iTunes is created uh, three playlists. You could have 60, doesn't matter, to rotate through and pick uh, for different schedulings. And I've loaded them up with uh, at least two hours of music. I went a little bit over because I know with track prep a lot of these tracks are actually going to be shortened for overlaps and all that sort of thing. So I gave a little more than two hours. So back here in Scheduler, let's create a new program. We'll call it Rotated. And it's going to be a two-hour program. And while I'm here looking at length, let me talk a little bit about this. In most of the tutorials, you'll see I've been using 60-minute, uh, one-hour programs. Uh, but you have all these other choices here. Now, when I first created Radiologic Scheduler, uh, I only had 30, 60, 90, and 120 because I figured you really don't need to program for, for much more than that in a script. It's a lot simpler. Your scripts are just a lot simpler and easier to understand. Uh, they're shorter, etc. If you work in the smallest block that you can, and you, you can make different blocks and you can alternate them on different days and, you know, you can get your variety that way. The only times I think you really need to go and make a three-hour block or a five-hour block, which I did, you know, by request, uh, people compelled me to do this because uh, people were coming in with, uh, hey, I have a five-hour track. Uh, how is this going to program in there? Okay, so uh, we do have uh, larger blocks then, but if you can, work with the smallest blocks you can. So for the two-hour, um, this is one I like to use for classical. I don't happen to have any classical in this library here today. Uh, but uh, the purpose would be uh, to pick from this playlist, and I want to get all the tracks in the order of the playlist. Uh, say a symphony, I want all the movements in the right order. I've hand-picked out what I want for the day. Um, but uh, as far as station IDs and time announcements go, um, you know, maybe I'm repeating this at a different time of the day. Um, I want that kind of content to be dynamic. I want my ads to be dynamic at that time of day, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can do add some variety, but you still want to have that main playlist uh, be a certain number uh, of tracks that you've picked out in what order you want them in. So. We've got a time here. Let's put uh, all days. Uh, the next segment will be at 5. So let's pick uh, 5 p.m. here. And um, what we'll do for the rotated playlist, this is where you write it in. You put the name of the playlist. Uh, this first number you want to start with, a slash, and then the total number of playlists we have. So we have three here. Again, you could have 60. I don't, you know, whatever works. That's what I have for classical, 60 or 70 of them. Let's go into the script. Let's throw down a time announcement. We're in Scheduler Advanced. And let's have that interrupt at um, uh, the top of the hour. Let's put down a station ID. We'll make it random unique. Turn unique off if it fails. Click the station ID button. Uh, let's pick a, um, for this I want to do probably a, a promos to introduce it, uh, random unique, unique off if I can't find unique, and let's get started with picking some of that music. We'll use a fill command, and what I want to do is I want to get to the top of the next hour where I need to do my time announcement and station ID. So my song lengths in here are averaging about four minutes, let's say. Uh, so let's go for a minimum time of 58, and uh, you know if a song uh, goes over, uh, chances are it's going to get very close uh, to ending near the top of the hour on average. So that's there. Um, let's go get um, a time announcement, and let's get uh, station ID and uh, maybe promos again. In fact, let's copy these three lines, paste them in down here. So we got our station ID, our promos, and now we want to fill to the end of the program, which will be 120 minutes minimum. And um, 
uh, what did I get wrong here? Oh, one of the things you want to do is you want to huh, choose your rotated playlist. And we'll get our rotated playlist in here. So these fills are picking from the rotated playlist, and we want to get unique. And what unique means is it's not going to be able to wrap around the whole playlist and grab the first track again if it runs out of tracks in the playlist. Um, it's just a, a, a fair idea uh, uh, to do that. Um, uh, actually, no loop would be on to do that. But I'll have unique tracks on. There's no harm in doing that. And um, let's see where this goes. Well, we'll give it a we'll give it a test run. So what's going to happen is when I schedule 5 p.m., uh, this shows which playlist it's going to pick from. It's going to pick from Modern One, and when I go every time it schedules, it's actually going to up this number to Modern Two, so you can see where it is, and uh, it will do three on the next schedule, and then the next schedule after that will re return back to Modern One. So let's see how this turns out. go over to DJ and take a look at the result. So we have it starting at 5 p.m. We have our station ID, we have our promo, we go through the music, it fills um, and actually gets the uh, time announcement at 6 o'clock, does the station ID, fills again, and gets us up, up past uh, the two-hour mark up here past 7 p.m. And for the next program, I could have it, you know, start at 7 p.m. and it interrupt and it would fade this out. So that's how that works. Let's clear the list, demonstrate again. Let's look back and you can see it went to Modern 2. We'll build another one just to demonstrate. Tracks come in. See how close we got to the top of the hour here in a moment. So here it's a little bit earlier. That's fine. Uh, but we did go over like we needed to, over the two hours like we asked it to. And we'll do one more just for fun so we can see it actually rotate back around. So we're doing our third playlist on this scheduling. See where our ID ends up. See, this time it's a little bit over, but it's it's the general area we wanted. And again, it fills exactly as much as we need to fill. Let's look, go back and look at scheduler and see where it says we have the rotated playlist. It went back to one, just as we expected. So, and that's how rotated playlists work. Use your imagination for how you think you could use that well.